This is what your first iron factory should look like. To build this, start by finding enough iron nodes to extract 60 iron ore per minute. This could be two impure nodes, a single normal node, or a single pure node, in which case even one miner will actually extract twice as much as you need. Next, pick an area leading away from the nodes that's relatively flat and has enough space to accommodate at least a few rows of connected machines. In this direction, place down two smelters side by side, set the recipe to iron ingots, and feed them with iron ore from the miners. If you're using just one miner on a normal or pure node, you need to use a splitter. On the output side of the smelters, place down three constructors. Configure two of them to make iron rods and feed them with iron ingots from the same smelter. Then configure the third one to make iron plates and feed it with iron ingots from the other smelter. Now go to the other side of the constructors you just placed and in front of one of the constructors making iron rods, place down a merger, followed by a splitter, followed by another constructor. Configure this constructor to make screws and connect up the belts like so. Next, from one of the side outputs of the splitter, bring out an extra segment of belt, rotate it to face the same direction as all the machines, and align it with the previous machines in its lane before placing it down. At the end of the production line, place down three storage containers and connect them with the outputs of each lane. You can also label them like this, so you know which is which without having to open them. At last, put down a bunch of power poles, connect all the machines in the same grid, and connect this grid to your power source. This kind of factory is great for automating the essentials as early on in the game as possible without overdoing scale and complexity. It's super small, which means it costs very few materials to build, which means you can build it very early, giving it more time to run, which means it doesn't have to be super large to still generate the materials you need to fly through the early milestones. Although, if you do want to scale up this factory, you can do so very easily. Iron rods and iron plates are inherently very modular and thus very easy to scale. If you haven't already noticed, this factory is actually made up of two modules that pretty much stand alone. This module takes in 30 iron ore and spits out 20 iron plates per minute, and this module takes in 30 iron ore and spits out 30 iron rods per minute. You can always increase your iron ore production by finding more nodes or overclocking your existing miners. For every extra 30 ore per minute you produce, you can build and feed another one of these modules to make more of either item. If you do the module for rods, you can also decide whether or not you even want to turn some of them into screws, depending on what it is you need. Now, I should probably explain what's going on in this section right here. The two constructors making iron rods each produce 15 rods per minute, but the constructor making screws consumes only 10 rods per minute. If we dedicated one of the rod constructors to feeding the screw constructor, the screw constructor can only make use of 10 out of the 15 rods coming in every minute, and the 5 extra will have nowhere else to go. Eventually, its inventory will fill up, which will cause the input belt to also fill up, which will then cause the rod constructor to turn off every 3 cycles. And this factory as a whole will no longer be making full use of the 60 iron ore coming into the system. This problem can be partially addressed by simply splitting the iron rods going into the constructor making screws and merging the new belt into the line that goes into storage for the rods. This way, any extra rods supplied to the constructor can overflow into storage, instead of building up and causing machines further back in the production line to periodically shut down. However, this configuration introduces a new problem. A splitter with multiple connected outputs will split the input evenly between each output. So an input of 15 will be split into two outputs of 7.5. 7.5 per minute this way, and 7.5 per minute that way. Since making screws consumes 10 rods per minute, 
this constructor will now be underfed until that storage container is full, thereby causing all of this to back up, and only then will this splitter send more rods to the constructor because the other line is full. So if we want this constructor to be working at full capacity like everything else, this is still not ideal, because it will only start doing that once this entire storage container has been filled up, which can take a long time. The setup I used reaches equilibrium much faster. It starts by merging the output of both of these constructors into a line of 30 iron rods per minute, and then splits them into two lines of 15. Screws only consume 10 per minute, so initially it will overfeed this constructor, but once this constructor's inventory slot is full, and this belt is also full, the excess iron rods will begin to all flow into storage. So for this setup to reach equilibrium and start working at full efficiency, it only needs to form a buffer of 200 items plus however many items can fit on this belt, and not a buffer of an entire storage container. Now, these kinds of considerations are not crucial in the early game. In fact, if you simply needed less screws and more rods from the rod module, one of the earlier setups might actually have been better, and you could even underclock the machines that are being underfed to save power. However, it is definitely worth it to try and start thinking about these things as much as possible, as early as possible, because later on in the game you will run into decisions of a similar nature, but more complicated and more important. That's it guys, leave a like if you liked the video, leave a comment if you have anything to tell me, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and check out these videos if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, have a great day.